Today I would like to talk about dyslexia and second language learning. Dyslexia is one of the four specific learning difficulties or, as we can also call it, specific learning differences. These four specific learning difficulties include dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia and dyspraxia. In some countries, ADHD and autism spectrum disorders are also referred to as learning difficulties. These difficulties often overlap with each other and vary in their severity. They are, however, difficulties and not disabilities. Unfortunately, in our country, dyslexia is often referred to as a, dis as a kind of disability and very often in the common knowledge it contains some negative connotation. Unfortunately, because it shouldn't be like that, it is a state, but it is definitely not a disability. By that I mean that although uh, the person who has dyslexia and some specific learning disorders or uh, difficulties does have to work hard and does have to cope with very difficult problems but it doesn't mean that the person has a disability. As Judith Cornish referred to it in her metaphor, if you imagine language learning as a race, a running race, and all the competitors race or run from start to the final, to the finish line, uh, just on the field. Now, if you have a student with dyslexia, now this student has to complete the race with hurdles. Of course, it means that he or she has to put much more effort in his or her work. And it also means that he or she gets much more tired at the, end of, at the end of the race by the finish line. It is now known that 10% of the student population has dyslexia or some other kind of specific learning difficulties. It means that you have at least one student out of 10 who has dyslexia in your group. It also means that we cannot ignore these students and we cannot ignore the way how they learn. So we must be prepared to look for ways and to learn ways to help these students to give scaffolding for them so that they would find the easiest way how they can learn a language or how they can acquire another language. It is not the case that they cannot learn a language or acquire a language, um, but for some of them it takes much more time, much more effort, and for some of them it is easier a little bit. Uh, but even those need to work really hard, much harder than the others who do not have these difficulties. However, these students often compensate on the mother tongue so when they learn uh, Hungarian grammar or literature literature or literacy and reading they learn how to compensate so our responsibility as language teachers are is really big because uh, we might be the one who recognize or who can recognize if a student has, has dyslexia. Because uh, um, while learning or when starting to learn second language, that's the time when usually students cannot compensate anymore and problems and difficulties can occur. 
Obviously, that is another reason why it is important for us to know about dyslexia. So how can we help these students? The first thing which is very, very important is to have empathy because uh, these students have really difficult time while looking at the others who get on very well with studying and learning and they usually fall behind and for them it uh, everything is just much more difficult. Uh, of course they are more stressed therefore they lose motivation much quicker. However, we must be aware of the fact that these students are usually have strengths. For example, they have very good problem solving skills. They tend to think out of box and they usually very creative. And uh, these are the students who have very uh, often very serious spatial knowledge, uh, a knowledge that we as ordinary people without dyslexia do not have. So once again, it is very important that we should turn to them with empathy and we have to give them scaffolding and uh, many examples of learning strategies as possible so that they would find the best way they can learn the language and they would find it for themselves and they, they would find it out for themselves. But what causes dyslexia? There are cognitive causes such as phonological processing problems, short-term working memory span, slower speed of processing, and problems with focusing for a long time on an issue, on the same issue. Phonological processing problems include difficulties in perceiving how sounds work and how sounds relate to letters. And these difficulties can actually cause the reading related difficulties and challenges. Working memory is the number, refers to the number of information that you can hold in mind before they are transferred into long-term memory. Well, students who has dyslexia has a, have a short-term uh, working memory span. It means that they can hold fewer pieces of information in the mind uh, before they are transferred into the long-term memory. And it also means that for these students you need more and more practice, much more practice uh, uh, until these pieces of information uh, can be transferred into long-term memory. But how do all these affect second language learning or second language acquisition? Well, it does affect uh, reading and not only because of the phonological processing uh, problems but also because students with dyslexia have problems with reading comprehension too. It also has an effect on uh, writing of course because of the spelling and again because of the phonological uh, processing problems but also because they have to keep in mind lots of things at the same time and uh, it can um, make it harder for example to organize uh, their ideas. It is the same problem with speaking because you know, uh, these students has, have a short-term uh, working memory spam and they cannot remember 
or they cannot pay attention to fluency, accuracy, and conveying the content at the same time. Uh, to tell you the truth, it is often very difficult even for people who do not uh, have uh, these specific learning uh, difficulties. Remembering information through listening can be another challenge for uh, students with dyslexia and of course when learning grammar and vocabulary um, uh, it affects these areas too. I will explain it later how. So it is very obvious that we cannot leave these students behind um, and we need to choose inclusive teaching methods and uh, I am going to show some of these uh, inclusive methods and strategies that might be helpful for your students uh, in accordance with the skills. Uh, I hope you will find that uh, useful too in my next video. So I hope that now you uh, actually have a picture of what dyslexia is and what is the connection with uh, dyslexia and second language learning and why it is important that we should pay attention to students with dyslexia and help them as much as possible.